They were four ordinary teenagers from the dirty South, but they each had the talent, passion, and determination to make it in the cutthroat world of music. After one life-changing audition, they were set on the path to platinum record selling and Grammy winning success. However, major drama behind the scenes between the members would eventually cause everything to come crashing down. Let's find out what happened to American R&B group 112. The original group consisting of members Michael Keith, Duran Jones, and Reginald Finley met in Atlanta, Georgia as teenagers. Duran and Mike were in middle school at the time, while Reginald was in high school. Once all three were in high school, they met fellow schoolmate Alden Lagan. He had an incredibly deep bass voice, and the others thought he would be a perfect addition to the group. Then they met high falsetto Marvin Scandrick, who would later go by the name of Slim, who also sang with them in the school chorus. The group performed in various talent shows around Atlanta under the name Forte, an acronym for Forever En Route to Excellence. At one show in particular, they would meet the person who would later become their manager, Kevin Wales. He just so happened to be friends with the CEO of a new up and coming hip hop record label and told the head honcho that he needed to check out these four talented young men. That CEO was Sean Diddy Combs of Bad Boy Records. Being based in Atlanta, however, the group had already crossed paths with a local producer by the name of Dallas Austin and recorded a demo with him. Diddy got a hold of it and liked what he heard on tape, but needed to hear it in person. So during a business trip to Atlanta, he met up with the boys at a local club for an on-the-spot audition. Well, technically they met in the parking lot since no one in the group was of age to get inside the club. By this time, Reginald and Alden had left the group and final member Quinnis Q. Parker was added. Even after they aced the audition, Diddy still wasn't convinced. His significant other at the time, model and actress Kim Porter, along with R&B singer Usher and future fellow label mate R&B singer Faith Evans, would be the ones to convince him that 112 had something special, and he would regret it later if he let them go. Diddy listened and signed the group to his Bad Boy Records label. They then changed their name to 112, the name of the Atlanta nightclub where their audition took place. In May 1996, the group's debut single called Only You was released. The track peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 3 on the R&B chart. A remix version of the song featuring their label mates, rappers The Notorious B.I.G. and Mace was also released as a single. Their self-titled debut album dropped that August. Two other singles, including the hit slow jam Cupid, helped the album to go double platinum. They would win a Grammy Award the following year for Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group for their featured performance on the song I'll Be Missing You with Diddy and Faith Evans. Even though 112 considers themselves a group of four lead singers, record companies often have a different idea. Diddy wanted one lead singer and selected Slim to play that role. He had a very unique voice not only compared to his groupmates, but also compared to other male R&B vocalists that were climbing the charts at the time. Their second album, Room 112, was released in 1998 and included the hits Love Me featuring Mace and Anywhere featuring rapper Lil Zane. It was around this time that the group members began to notice that the money was indeed funny. They enjoyed being at the top of the charts, traveling the world, and everyone knowing who they were, but their lifestyle didn't reflect that at all. Nevertheless, they carried on. In a 2017 interview with New York's Power 105.1 morning show, The Breakfast Club, the group discussed their long-standing beef with fellow Atlanta-based R&B group, Jagged Edge. 112 had the idea for the groups to tour together and capitalize off each other's fan bases. Little did Jagged Edge know, 112 also had a secret plan to start a fake beef between the groups hoping to increase hype and ticket sales. The plan backfired after Mike from 112 made a bold claim in an interview that his group was superior. Jagged Edge made an equally bold response and it was on like popcorn. Eventually, after a face-to-face -face talk, everything was squashed. 
When the time to begin work on their third album came around, Diddy was unfortunately unable to be as hands-on as he was on their previous projects. He was preoccupied with repeated court appearances regarding a shooting incident at a New York City nightclub on December 28, 1999, involving himself, then-girlfriend, triple threat Jennifer Lopez, and up-and-coming rapper, Jamal Shine Barrow. So, instead of taping at the usual accommodations in Diddy's studio, 112 went to Nashville, Tennessee to record. The group's third album, Part 3, was released in 2001. Even without Diddy, the album took off, powered by the lead single, It's Over Now, and the follow-up, Peaches and Cream, which would go on to become their biggest hit to date. The song also earned the group a Grammy nomination in the Best R&B Group or Duo category. Soon, it became time to renegotiate the group's contract with Bad Boy. Since the foursome had matured, both personally and professionally, they decided to reject the offer Diddy made to them, believing they could do better elsewhere. 112 left Bad Boy and signed to Def Jam in 2002. Their fourth album, and first with their new label, titled Hot and Wet, was released in November 2003. It, however, failed to produce the numbers that their previous albums did. They soldiered on and redeemed themselves two years later with their fifth album, Pleasure and Pain. The album featured the popular single, You Already Know, and achieved platinum status. Shortly after the release of the album, though, the members decided to separate and were subsequently dropped by Def Jam. Over the next decade, all four members would go on to release solo projects. Mike would be the first with an album titled Michael Keith in September 2008. After several years of hoping 112 would come back together and realizing precious time was being wasted, Slim signed his own label deal and released his solo debut album titled Love's Crazy in November 2008. He had great success with the singles So Fly and Good Lovin'. His sophomore album titled Refueled would drop many years later in 2016. Duran followed next with his debut album titled Uncensored in 2010. After a promo EP put out in 2009, Last Member Q finally released his full-length debut album titled The Manual in October 2012. Earlier that year, Duran confirmed that all four members of the group were reconciled and had got back together for a summer tour. It's not clear what kind of experience the members had with one another on that tour, but a major turn of events was about to happen. Q, along with Wingo from Jagged Edge and RL from R&B Trio Next, formed their own group called WQRL. They released the single, All I Want Is You, in the summer of 2014. Regardless of how the other members of 112 felt about Q's decision to form another group, it didn't stop them from coming together in June 2015 to participate in that year's BET Awards as part of the Bad Boy reunion segment. It was arguably the best performance of the night and provided the catalyst to the Bad Boy reunion tour that the group would also join the following year. In early 2017, the band announced they were releasing a new album, and that summer they released a couple of lead-in singles, Strawberry and Dangerous Games. Q, Mike, Slim, Duran, their first album in 12 years, dropped in October 2017. The second and final single from the album accomplished something the group wanted to happen for a long time. It brought them together with past rivals, now close friends, Jagged Edge, on a track called Both of Us. While promoting the album, the foursome presented a united front and appeared to enjoy being back together again. However, less than a year later, 112 went from four to two when Q and Duran decided to leave. In a since deleted Instagram post with text message receipts included, Slim felt compelled to give the fans an explanation and let loose about not only what happened to cause this split, but also the group's first split years ago. I'm for the brand. I never left it, never cheated it. Ironically, the same guys who broke the group up before are at it again. And although it's easy to walk away and pick up solo situations or investments, it would be unfair to at least give a hint in what's going on. Brotherhood was broken in 0304. Parties know why, and I was honest in where I stand. So stop lying about friendships. It's business. Q went on to create The Bridge Project, what he describes as a thought-provoking musical body of work. 
The project, which is also intended to be a collaborative album featuring over 50 artists, is meant to bridge the gap between brotherhood and music. At the beginning of 2020, the project was kicked off with the release of its first track called Made For. Duran has continued to write, record, and produce not only his own work, but for other artists as well. In February 2019, he dropped his last album to date titled Human. His most current work, a single called Impossible, dropped March 1st, 2021, and can be found on all streaming platforms. The split, it seemed, would become even more real during the Instagram Live versus battle between 112 and Jagged Edge in May 2020. Fans definitely hoped that for this occasion, all four members would put their differences aside to participate. However, that didn't happen. Both Q and Duran took to social media to explain that they wouldn't be able to join in due to an ongoing legal issue. The issue being who had the rights to the 112 name. Q and Duran filed a lawsuit in the summer of 2018 against Slim and Mike for allegedly trying to trademark the name behind their backs. The following year, Slim fired back with a lawsuit of his own, citing trademark infringement, false advertising, deceptive trade practices, and more, claiming the men were using the name to make music, book appearances, and perform when Slim legally owns the rights. Slim and Mike would forge ahead to keep the 112 name alive and release the single Spend It All in July 2020. It's the first single from the group's EP, 112 Forever, Slim and Mike, which they released independently on September 4th. Unfortunately, also during this time, Mike contracted COVID-19, and Slim was left to hold everything down over the next month during Mike's recovery. Slim knew all too well what Mike was going through, since he also contracted the illness several months earlier. A few other singles would be released over the coming months and into the new year. They continued to promote the album by performing numerous sold-out concerts around the U.S. in 2021. This year also marks the 25th anniversary of their debut album. They maintain that they'll remain a twosome for the foreseeable future and don't plan on adding any new members. Fans, naturally, want to see the original four back together again. However, only time will tell if 112 will once again become Q, Mike, Slim, and Duran. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.